friends, welcome back to my channel and welcome to a February faves and fails. This is a past month, we already knew that, but the fact that we are now two months down into 2023 feels rushed, right? Am I crazy? Maybe I am. Today I have a plethora of makeup, products, skincare, the whole thing that I have been trialing and testing behind the scenes. I have been doing some shopping because I've wanted to see more of what's out there for the drugstore. What are some things out there that maybe don't break the bank for makeup? Because a lot of us either aren't doing BoxyCharm anymore or subscription boxes for makeup. And uh, speaking of BoxyCharm and subscription boxes, you guys, editing Nicole here, jumping in really quickly to tell you and remind you, please check out my YouTube shorts because be, this video was shot before all of the information with BoxyCharm and Ipsy has dropped. So I really have been giving you guys the deep investigative like information about how this is going to affect you, each box with BoxyCharm. And by the time this video goes up, I'm probably gonna have even more shorts up because I literally just got an email finding out how this will affect us as content creators. What does this mean? What are you gonna see on my channel? What are you not gonna see on my channel? definitely be sure to check out my YouTube shorts. And I know some of you guys have said before, I don't know how to get to your shorts. YouTube is being weird. I know. Go to my homepage on my page, not YouTube's homepage, but my homepage. And then you will see a whole ticker at the top giving you some options of what to view. View my shorts and that will be where you get all of the information that I am keeping you guys updated with as I discover more as well. And I will definitely be diving into this in a bigger feature video soon. But like I said, I already had this one when going up so I've been updating you guys with shorts now back to the video and I've been wanting to kind of like delve a little deeper into what I can purchase and I don't want to break the bank myself and we already know I got a full whole beauty room in here so it has to be special if I'm bringing it in and then keeping it also if you missed my last video we're starting a declutter series you guys speaking of when my keeping things that are quality in my beauty space I just uploaded a recent lip collection declutter. It goes through A to Z, all of my lip products, everything. And I got real ruthless. Y'all were even proud of me. You guys were like, oh my gosh, I wasn't expecting you to declutter that much. I was pretty proud, pretty proud. So today I'm gonna tell you what has kind of stayed in the beauty space, some other disappointments. I actually have more, dang it. I have some more fails in front of me than I'd even like to tell you. And they're newer products that I was testing and trialing through the month of February to give them multiple goes. But I also have some wins in here that I want to tell you about. So you know how this goes, guys. You grab your tea, you grab your snack, grab your water, get comfy. Let's get cozy and chatty together as we talk about some faves and fails for the month. Cheers! I'm even wearing a lot of the things in here that I have loved, but I've kind of skipped over some of the things I have not loved. Let's, how do we want to start? Do you guys want to start with negatives? Like, oh, I already, already want to get rid of this. This is already making me crazy. Or do you want to start with a positive? I wish we could do like live polls while I talk to you. I know how I want to start. I want to start about how you, my friend, have influenced me. How you have influenced me in my morning routine. And I'm pretty particular with how I start my days and end my days. I feel like how I do my own personal rituals in the mornings with like getting up with my coffee, the puppies, sitting in the beauty space, kind of having my relaxing mornings. I I'm very picky with how I, I go about my routine and you guys have influenced me to add something. So let's start there. In my last BoxyCharm video, y'all told me this was your new, like this was your favorite. I don't know if this was new favorite for some of you, but some of you said this is so good. You got it in something else a while back and you were like, girl, use it, use it, use it. So I trust you. This is the Brighter Skin Co. Eye Bright Now Serum. It's like an oil, which I was not accustomed to using oils on my face in the morning. I really, really wasn't. It's for anti-puffing and anti-dark circles. And so many of you said, I love that, Nicole. Please put that into your routine so you, you could try this. So I've essentially added this to my routine. And you guys know I have I have skincare overload back here. I've actually been really weeding through it for the past, I don't know, year. It feels like a year at least. And now I've added this into my routine because you guys said it's so good and how much it's a staple for you. So stay tuned, be subscribed. I just got it in. You guys just influenced me, but I wanted you to know right out the gate. I, I'm, I'm, I trust you. I trust you. I am seeing my skin looking really good though. 
I, but like that kind of attributes to a lot of different things I always feel like and I'm gonna tell you about something else that I think it's helping with too but I do think I'm noticing with this how quickly have you noticed with this type of serum oil product that on your face you start to see like brightening depuffing I mean I'll take all the help I can get this is actually a product that I purchased over the summer when you know in the summertime it's hotter I live in Florida where the humidity is level 1000 devil's butt crack it's really really hot here in the summertime although I have to say you Midwesterners you guys still have us beat when it comes to like longevity of how long y'all be in triple digits because oh I remember those days either way all of that to say I liked a water cream in the summertime to help an oily skin girl out because even though I have been transitioning I would say a bit more to combo type skin over the past few years this is the time of year though your girl needs to do all of the things in the morning otherwise my makeup starts to look a little dry by the afternoon because the, you know the weather is more cool the humidity is down and this is a pricey product and I told you guys I'd be really honest with you especially with well everything but with pricey products I want you to know if something is really gonna be worth your dollars because some of this stuff isn't cheap sometimes but it works really well and I'm almost done with her this is the Tatcha water cream this is a refreshing anti-aging pore perfecting Japanese wild rose and it's for normal to oily skin and I can say I feel like I fall into that category throughout the year. So I've been trying this now for at least six months. Now I'm not saying you'll get six months worth of use out of this if you use it every single day. I tend to use it multiple times a week, but especially over the winter, I've been diving into this every day. And I think you can tell in the jar, I'm right at the bottom here. This is a really good product. The reason I like a water cream and like specifically for my type of skin, which if you're newer here, oily with some bossy pores, especially right up front. I have found that some moisturizers can break me out because I'm sensitive or they just kind of sit extra dewy on my skin and then all my makeup can slip or move. So a product has to be really good for this type of skin because I'm apparently a problem. How does that song go? Taylor, how does it go? It's me, hi, I'm the problem, it's me. That's how it goes, I'm the problem. In the winter though specifically, in the summer too, I find this to work well, but in the winter, what it'll do is you could feel the creaminess and it really dives into your skin, lives there, but then your face doesn't feel like, I don't know, tacky to the touch or anything. It really absorbs and I appreciate that with my skin type. It works well when I'm doing a no makeup day or a full beat or even just a natural makeup day, which I do do those. So I actually really think this has been really great for my personal type of skin. Again, prone to acne if I'm not careful or breakouts. It's, it's a little sensitive and also I get oily about midday most of the year. So I always have to be really mindful of that. And this seems to work out like a champ, even after like maybe a day where I've had no makeup, but I've been in the sun a little bit. I feel like I can put this on at the end of the day or the beginning of the next. And it just kind of like gives me that life back into the skin, not on the skin, but in the skin. So I do love this. Well, she's pricey, warned, I'm warning you. So if you see her on a deal, grab it. Now I feel like I have not spoken about this in a while. And in my new declutter series, a lot of you guys said you wanted to see foundations, concealers, and primers as my next big declutter video. So if you wanna see that, let me know in the comments below, thumb the video up, give me something so I know what you're hoping for. But I have to tell you, I've almost finished up this primer and I, I think I've had her almost a year. I don't know if we've hit the, you know, we may just be at the one year anniversary mark of owning this because I actually fell in love with so much of the Shop Miss A AOA line that they have on their website for a dollar that I think this is worthy to let you know. I am now throughout the year used this pretty, I would say, obviously I've been trying other primers, but I would say I do know I can trust this. So I would travel with this. I've used this pretty frequently. It's a tiny little muff in here, but she is a really good primer. I would say, even though I don't know if it even claims to do this, this smooths my bossy pores more than some of the more high end, especially more expensive products. I've even tried some things that I'm like, why is nothing giving me the smoothness of the pores that is more expensive than this $1 primer? What is going on? Does it claim to? It says Clean Slate is a lightweight and melts right into your skin, leaving it silky smooth while extending makeup wear. And it's cruelty free. I totally agree with it. It's a dollar. It's not breaking the bank. And I have used this with 
budget friendly makeup like things at the drugstore things that are really inexpensive like wet and wild or some of the stuff I'm going to tell you about but I've also loved this with my high-end Natasha Denona's I've loved this with CoverGirl which is you know one of my favorites um I've, I've tried it with all the things all the things and I I'm literally squeezing this tube being like I I need the rest of you I need the rest of you and I'm trying to suss it out of this bottle I'm gonna have to buy another one. I'm gonna have to do another like video maybe with Shop Miss A. I don't know with the products that I've loved. I still can't get the powder back in that I've loved so much from there and I miss it so. Love this, highly recommend it. And it's so inexpensive. I love it when beauty products are that amazing and they cost a dollar. That's not the world we live in anymore. So I get hyped about it, right? Okay, so I don't know if I have the new packaging of this next product but I'm not finding online where it looks exactly like what I am holding in my hot little hand here. But again, I have to admit, y'all influenced me again. And this has been on my radar for a while. A lot of you guys have told me, cause you know, I am a powder lover. I love a good powder to, you know, try to help this face, kind of settle out some pores, smooth all the things. You guys have told me for a really long time that number seven at the drugstore was like a dupe for a stunning uh, Charlotte Tilbury powder that cost a zillion dollars, but it did the same thing and was known to be the dupe. So I've actually been thinking about it for a long time, but it's never been at any of my drugstores. So I happened to be at Target the other day and I found number seven Lift and Luminate Triple Action Pressed Powder. I got the shade medium. It was the only shade they had, but I thought, you know, this could really work for me. It is a touch too warm, I'll be honest, especially for February. So I do feel like I need to take a little bit of a fluffier brush. So it has less of a powerful like punch on the face of color. Um, but I don't think I did too good of a job. So I had to do a little bit of warming of the body to try to blend a little bit. But I think I like this finish, you guys. Is this the product you were telling me about? Again, the packaging looks a little different. It's more, it's not that oval shape, it's a circular shape, but it is the number seven Lift and Luminate Triple Action Translucent Pressed Powder. Well, it's not translucent though, it's medium. Maybe I need the translucent. I didn't find anything else but this at my drugstore. I may just have to order stuff online. Now, because it does luminating, I will say I felt like I had to powder down just a little bit more in the midsection of my face today because I was already using some other powders today that I thought also do a really good job of illuminating and blurring. So I had a little too much dew going on for this face, but I think I like this, you guys. Is this the product you were telling me about? Should I be looking for something else too? I'm always down to try a powder. I mean, when I get to that powder portion of my declutter, you'll know what I mean. It's, it's excessive in here. I have a whole drawer dedicated. This claims to help diffuse light for a flawless illuminating finish, leaves the skin looking smoother and more radiant, reduces the appearance of fine lines, and it's available in four shades. Again, the only shade they had available for me was medium, and I am able to make it work, so if you're similar to me, but like I said, I've been using a fluffier brush. And I have used this for like a midday touch up too. And I thought it does really well just to kind of like make everything a little bit more smooth. So again, you have influenced me and I have to say thank you because so far I really like it. Okay, so I'm a little disappointed in this next product. And it's such a big bad bummer because I at first thought this was going to be a home run affordable foundation because a lot of y'all know I have been obsessed with my drugstore CoverGirl Advanced Radiance the three-in-one foundation with Olay in it for years now I still every now and again get questions about what my favorite foundation is from the drugstore in case you have missed it somehow some way this is her and I have two colors right now in my collection. Usually I have three or four to color match depending on the time of year. Right here is my go-to. It's the CoverGirl Olay Advanced Radiance. I said Advanced Radiance. I keep saying Advanced Radiance because of the powder I love, but this is the Simply Ageless Hyaluronic Complex with Vitamin C. So good. Makes my skin look put together, a little blurred, a little, I don't want to even use the word dewy because I know my oily skin friends will be like, I don't want dew. It just makes my skin look like it's got a filter on, it looks very nice, and it has the proper luminosity throughout the day, but not like overly oily or shiny. I love it, talked about it for years. But I'm always looking for that next best thing. I feel like I've been such a slave to that product that I'm like, I need to find something else. So I, I, I'm sad right now that this has, starts beautiful. I'm gonna start there. Starts, like I was like, oh, this is at a home run. I cannot wait to tell my friends. And then if you have skin like me, 
it really starts to settle into fine lines really bad midday to the point that I'm like I can't even like buff it back out with powders or anything and I have tried it just like really settles into the fine lines by midday and I it's not what I'm going for this is the essence keep me covered long-lasting foundation I had such high hopes for this because like I said when I put it on originally it looks so darn good I love that at Ulta it's like $6.99 I love an affordable foundation now this is gonna be really matte too so if you are super duper oily and you're like girl you keep talking about these things that can kind of make your skin look like a filter with a little bit of dewy or glowiness I don't want any of that I only want matte I still love the matte look this could be your jam this could totally be your jam for me, in what I call lovingly to my father who gave me his Fisher forehead, I need to get Botox in certain areas and just send him the bill because it's just, it's been here since I was a teenager. I have always had a very expressive forehead and in between the eyes. So it just, I know that that's where things can pull into a line and that tends to be my barometer for specific types of products like a foundation. And unfortunately, the shade here is even just a touch too dark for me, even though I kind of battled myself back and forth in the store going should I get 100 natural which is what I got or the step below I should have gone the step below but this really settles into my Fisher forehead <laughs> um also it makes the rest of my makeup look really cakey because at first I was falling in love with this and I was like Adam it was end of the day what do you think of this I mean it's end of day wear be you know a little kind considering you know end of day and he was just like why does it look and he had boy language because he was just kind of like doing hand gestures. And he's like, why does it look like so heavy on your skin on certain areas? Because I was mostly focused on the forehead, but I was going to be forgiving about that. Because I was like, oh, maybe I could figure out something else with it. Honestly, it does make me look cakey through the middle part of the day. It settles into fine lines. I did try mixing it with other things to be preventative with it, such as. Y'all know I love my Pure in One tinted moisturizer that I've even used as a foundation. This is so good. Tried mixing it with this and that. Um, yeah, that, again, still had the same problem by midday. Tried using just a little tiny, tiny bit of the essence and then using more of my CoverGirl, thinking maybe it would be the best of both worlds. Again, by midday, towards the end of the day, uh, everything was settling into fine lines and wrinkles for me. It was making my lines more expressive than they even really are. So it was really exaggerating them. And I was like, is it because it's so dry? Should I, should I wait till it's like the heat of summer and give this a go again? I don't know, but I was like really hyped for it because I was so excited how it looked the first half of the day. But the end of the day, I was like, oh no. And no matter what I was mixing with it to be more generous or use less of it, I was still noticing the same thing over and over and over and I was like this is the definition of insanity let's go back to what you love for the moment so that's where I land with this unfortunately I've tried several ways to try to make this work you can kind of see on the back of my hand here how I was saying it is a little too dark for me at the moment I got 100 neutral is the color but as you can see she's a thick coverage she's a full coverage baby I think if this would have existed in 2016 I probably would have been like oh my god this is my new jam um, until it started again settling into my fine lines it wrinkles okay I don't know if this is a fail which is weird to say because I've had this in my collection for over a month now I forgot to talk about it at the end of last month because I was still like on the fence but I'm still on the fence because I'll leave this product for a while and come back to it it is a concealer from covergirl and you're like Nicole you just said your favorite foundation for years is from covergirl and I was like, I know that's why I bought this one. And it's in the same line of Simply Ageless. I, I, I've never heard anybody talk about this. So tell me if I've just missed all the reviews about this. But this is the CoverGirl Simply Ageless Triple Action Concealer. She looks like, you know, she'd be an average normal concealer, right? Well, until you take the top off and then you look at what should be a doe foot and it doesn't have a doe foot. And at first I didn't research this. I just saw that it was in the same line as my favorite foundation and thought, oh my gosh, holy grail, maybe, probably, let's try her. Apparently, it, it, I was like, where's the doe foot? I thought maybe mine just didn't have a doe foot. It, it, this is what it does. Like, this is the doe foot. It's just the stick because it's supposed to be cooling. And let me see what the marketing says about this because I can't remember now. Like I said, I've had this now for two months. Triple action concealer. I feel like everything is triple action. This number seven powder is triple action. Now the CoverGirl 
concealer is triple action. Everything is triple action. This must be the marketing buzzwords of the moment, I guess, right? So this comes in 10 different shades and it's got on their website, like the CoverGirl website, like four out of five stars. It says it's their most advanced concealer applicator with a cooling ceramic wand that immediately depuffs as it conceals. So I guess that's the shtick right now. I was like in my head being like, I'll bet you production forgot the doe foot. So a big marketing team got together at CoverGirl and was like, how do we spin this? We can't afford to, to, to undo all of these units we've made or something. I was making the joke in my head. This is all just me and my little brain and how it works. And I was just thinking in my head, I'm like, did they just forget to put doe foots on the top or did the machines malfunction? And then they were like, we need to say that this is a cooling wand. Like, how did this happen? I'm sure that's not how it really happened. But in my head, I was just laughing going, what did I buy that I didn't research enough before I, I, I'm trying it? Let's just try it. It says the wand glides easily without tugging and pulling under the sensitive area of the eye, which, yeah, I guess that's true. I also just was noticing I didn't have a ton of product on there, which was like, how does this work? This says the formula covers dark circles and evens out the skin tone, brightens the skin, and gives a well-rested, refreshed look under the eyes. It's a hydrating formula that doesn't crease and blends seamlessly into the skin without settling into lines. Based on the consumer study, 96 women out after the first week of use said 90% say they thought it was a natural looking finish. The shade I have here is in buff beige, which is very on brand for me this time of year. All right, let me get to the mirror and let me get all up close and I'm going to do the whole like, you know, magnified side. Now I will say again, I am testing some other powders in the beauty space, but I do see lines under the eyes, but I do have expressive eyes. So that's not like totally a non possibility for me, but I do think I see more lines with this than I do my elf hydrating camo uh, concealer in the satin finish. I do think I see more lines with the cover girl right now, but I will say I did think before when I was using it the first few times, cause I feel like I've had it for a while. Um, I did think it was a very natural looking concealer and I thought that today too so what I did today was I did double coats just to see can it layer upon itself and still be smooth and nice it went on and applied well I probably shouldn't have done that test though if I wanted to be sure it wasn't going to have any like creasing under the eyes because I do see it settling into some of my more expressive part of my under eyes but again my face I'm very expressive as you guys know a lot of you've let me know several times you're like you're so expressive and funny to watch I yeah that's me in life so I, I'm also part of the problem here again as Taylor Swift told me so I'm not totally disqualifying this but I just I hadn't heard anybody talking about it to be fair I had no idea that there was a doe foot going around that was just just the stick <laughs> and that it was for a cooling effect. I think it is a very natural finish, but I'm not like in love with it. I have said I've had this for two months. I do keep wanting to pop back into this though, because I feel like this gives maybe more smooth coverage is what I'll say. This is like a natural coverage. This is more of a smooth polished under eye look. So comparing apples and oranges a little bit maybe, but that's, that's what I've noticed so far. I don't like hate it, but I haven't found myself over the past two months going, I need to use this every day as I feel I could do with the e.l.f. and have done with the e.l.f. I hate to say it's a fail though. It's just not a fave, not a fave. This next product scared the crap out of me. <laughs> that sounds dramatic, but it's true. It scared me and I do find myself reaching for it though, but I've had to adjust how I use this product from Essence. So it's really inexpensive, but it's a learning curve. There's a learning curve. I was in Ulta just kind of roaming around the affordable section being like, what do I want to try? Oh, I'm running out of brow products. I've actually burned through a lot of my thin tipped pencils that I've had for the past, gosh, I don't know, year, nine months, 10 months. So what else is there out there that's fresh and new in the market? This is the Brow Like a Boss Ink Brow Gel for $4.99. And I was like, okay, let's give it a whirl. And the first time I tried it, I scared the crap out of myself because I was like, it's a brush. I was expecting a wand, like a very fluffy, filtery wand or something, and it's not. It's a brush 
that I feel like I even right now to show you on camera, I have to like tap off a lot of the excess because there's a lot, it's a liquidy product. And I was very intimidated by this. So something that I will do if a product that I'm reviewing or testing feels like it could get a little crazy really fast, especially with brows, I tend to start with the middle of the brow or the back end of the brow, see how the, the product is pulling, see how it's applying, because if I do it up front, it's gonna get crazy really quickly. But I can kind of control it a bit better for me personally if I start mid brow, pull it through. And then I can take whatever is left on the excess of the brush and then do the front, to kind of get a little bit more of the learning curve down before I go ham on a brow and accidentally give myself really blocky brows. I will say this product, if you use the amount of product that comes out on this, it's gonna really be messy. It's going to, it's a thicker product and it's a textured product. Like right now I can feel my brows. I can feel them. I did do two coats today because I feel like you could do a very natural look with this. If you wipe it off, maybe use a little bit of a napkin and then apply it gingerly, kind of do even strokes. But if you want a more bold brow, because like today I felt like I needed to not only show you on camera, but it also was just a bit too light toned for how dark my hair is and how my brows can kind of match my hair. So I did do another round of this and I will say, I've been trying this for a while. It can get goopy. It can get a little messy. She can be a little, um, you could do a really good area and then all of a sudden have a big splotch and feel like, oh no, I need to grab a Q-tip quickly. But I don't find that getting a quick Q-tip even can help sometimes. You really have to really work the product. Sometimes I will even have on hand with me a spoolie so I can brush it through, make it a little bit more natural. I've done that a few times to save the eyebrow. But the brow stays all day. It looks really refined. It looks defined, but still looks natural once you get it done. There's a learning curve. There's there's a learning curve. It honestly reminded me of when I got, was it an iconic London duo where it was like this really spongy, inky product. It kind of reminded me of a version of that. Obviously this is a different component, different style, but I had to start in the middle of my brow with that too and really work my way through it because it could get messy quickly. Same with this, this could go crazy. Have a delicate hand and build it because it's very easy to overwhelm the brow. But I don't hate this right now. I really don't. I feel like it's done a really good job and then it stays all day. It is stiff though. So if you don't like a stiff brow, or if you're somebody that feels like you always need a brow gel, this could save you for that. But if you don't like stiff brows, this, this won't be your jam. This will not be your jam. But if you need something that's gonna give you some lasting power, if you're going swimming, for example, and you wanna keep your brows on, cause maybe you have lighter brows and you feel like that just erases your face, you might be okay with this. I'm not, this does say waterproof actually. I was about to say this doesn't say waterproof. It does say up to 72 hours super lasting not not true the front of the brow because I tend to do a lighter hand there I feel like that can wash away easier at the end of the day but I don't have to worry about these brows going anywhere it is a 72 hour super lasting ink brow gel that is waterproof and I think this was true so if you're planning you know your spring break your summer trips you just have brows that I don't know fall off throughout the day because they wear down this will save you but there is a learning curve I've warned you there's a learning curve I thought I was gonna hate that to be honest but I ended up really finding myself using it pretty regularly. Something else that I have been using behind the scenes, but I do find it makes my skin more dewy through the day. And as an oily skin girl, I find that can be a little too much by midday for me, but I do like the formula on this. So if you are somebody that was really leaning into the dewy glowy look that is kind of on trend right now, and I have a feeling will be through the summer, I have been liking these Merit bronzers. These are actually called the Bronze Balms. I have the shades Clay and Quince. I talked about these before on my channel. I tend to do these right after I have done foundations and concealers, kind of draw out on my face where I want these to go as a little bit of a contour, natural contour look with a little bit more like depth to certain sections of my face because I know once I buff it out with a damp sponge, everything is gonna kind of look a little bit more seamless. I've actually been really liking this for natural days specifically, but if I'm doing a full beat, like I kind of have a little bit more makeup on today, it's done a really good job with that too, but it will have my skin be a little bit more glowy. But I have no other bronzers on today other than these products right here. And I have blush on top of this. I have a zillion powders on top of this. I think it looks really natural out and it's not very overwhelming. I am enjoying this from Merit and I never thought I would be a girl that was like, I want a cream bronzer in the morning, never. I have found myself reaching for these 
on and off for a while now. So I thought they were definitely worth an honorable mention in my faves. Speaking of blush, I also was still in the Essence aisle and I got two of their blushes. So many of you guys, when you saw I was shopping, cause I do tell you guys kind of when I'm going shopping on Instagram. And if you don't follow me there, you can follow me right here. So you know what's going on behind the scenes. You have the up and coming news on what I'm gonna be reviewing on my channel. Um, yeah, these are, these are called the blush from Essence. And I have two different shades here. I did not realize that these were going to be a little dewy. I have the shades Benefiting and Bespoke. I have honestly only used the shade Bespoke though, because this is a tone that I think works really great for my skin. It's a little bit more of a terracotta, a little bit of a brown base, less of a pink tone, but she definitely has some luminosity to her. I think you can see that even though this has the swatched foundation. <laughs> This is very, I think this is gonna look really beautiful this spring and summer. I just wasn't expecting it to be so glowy dewy. Um, and because some of the things I had been trying also make me dewy or illuminating, such as, you know, the powder here that is a lift and illuminate triple action. It can be a uh, more, more than I thought, but, 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 but I do have a little bit of a negative about this one because this dewiness, and I've had tons of dewy or glowy blushes that don't do this. So with this, I do find if you have bossy pores, like I do up front, and that's where you like to put your blush as well, it will seep into there by midday. And I do notice I can see my pores look a little bit more exaggerated with this particular blush, unfortunately. So what I tend to do is if I do wanna use this, I transition this more to the outer part, but I do still see my pores there. They're just not as maybe bossy over there. So if somebody's that close and up in your face, first of all, do you know them? Otherwise they should take six steps back. But I do need to be mindful of where I put this. I do have on my good smoothing primer today and I think that is really helping. I'm not noticing it nearly as much up here in the front, but I also took the blush with the lighter hand today and a fluffier brush, which helped as well. But I am liking them and that's super affordable. $3.99 for these kind of blushes? Pretty excited about that. Another powder that you guys have heard me talk about before, but I feel like she's worth an honorable mention right now because I have rediscovered her over the past couple of weeks after trying some other things. And I do still think this really helps a girl out when you're needing that filter blurred moment on your face in real life. If you've got some texture to your skin, I totally recommend this. This is the Real Her Set Your Goals powder. This is a blurring veil powder. I'm wearing this today. I've worn this with a fluffy brush, just kind of apply it with a little bit more of a fluffy brush over the face just to kind of smooth out some texture. Kind of give you that nice natural glow to your skin. It just looks healthy, it looks vibrant, it doesn't look oily, and it can honestly save the day if I'm trying some foundations that are a little bit more drying than I realized they'd be, especially by midday, or maybe in the beginning of the day. Maybe even this was just like really benefiting the whole overlooking glow. And, and I, I just, nothing could save by the end of the day with this. But I did realize how much I loved this powder yet again. So good, but I love a blurring veil. Give me all the blur. All right, this product, <sighs> I'm starting to understand why item beauty is not gonna be a thing much longer. Isn't item beauty um, the Addison Rae TikTok um, brand that is going away now? I have one of their concealers that I said has a lot of pros and cons, but I have used quite a bit of it up. This is, is this, what is this called? I'm scared to move it. This is the Lip Quip Lip Oil. And this had so much potential. I loved the color. I love the smell. It's like a mango smell. This is a very oily, dewy product. Here's the problem. I literally this morning had it sitting here on my vanity, as I have other days too, and I remembered why this was so annoying to me. It's because it can just sit there for no reason and seep the oils. I'm like, does it have a hole? Is it broken? Why is it seeping all over my vanity every time? I've got two different spots I can see right now that I had this set, no reason. I couldn't keep this in my handbag for those reasons. Also, okay, so the doe foot's large and I just thought, well, maybe it's the doe foot, well, maybe it's the oil. You take one bit of this product and it totally coats the, the doe foot, which is a good thing, but then it just, you immediately see a huge drop in the product. So even though this looks like a normal size, maybe lip oil, I have gone through this insanely fast. Is it because it's spilled out of my vanity? Yes. Is it because also it grabs to the doe foot and then just dissipates and there's no, no product left in there? Yeah, that's true too. I love the smell though. It's like this tropical mango-y papaya. What is the scent? 
It's like a fresh tropical moment. I'm on the beach. The waves are blowing. I can feel the wind and the sun on my face. It's doing a lot of good things and I love the look. It makes the lips look super hydrated, super juicy, gives a nice tinted coat that looks stunning. Has a lot of good things for it, has a lot of bad things for it. Uh, this will be gone within the next use or two because it just grabs to the doe foot, goes to your skin, goes to your vanity, disappears. I've not had this this long. I've not used up all this product. Where did it go? Where did it go? I don't know. I don't know. It's kind of a fail even though I like so much of it. I dislike so much more of it. And you don't get your money's worth. I'm sure this cost more than it was supposed to because it was a influencer brand kind of thing. Disappointed, but I'm going to use it up. But it'll take two more uses and she'll be gone. Again, while I was at Ulta, I was definitely perusing for the next big thing for me to try for the spring and summer. And y'all know I love a pop of green or blue under the eyes. I think that looks really good on brown eyes, but it can also just be so versatile for the summer and springtime for any hair, eye, skin type possible. So I love some good vibrant shades. So I have been loving some of the LA Girl liners. The one that I've really used at least two, three times now is the LA Girl Perfect Precision Eyeliner in the shade Tropical. It is this more aqua green tone, as you can see with the blanket back here. I have a type. I love a good pop of coastal vibes. I just do. And I have not gotten to try this neon liner yet. From the, It's the Shockwave line, and this one is in the shade Fresh. This one is going to be the next thing I try, but I'm letting you know this is up and coming. For being a pencil, I have found this to be super creamy. It's got a beautiful pull to it. I don't normally like wooden pencils unless I can tell they're going to be, you know, really quality. This is only $3.49 at Ulta, and I have found that I can use this a touch in the waterline. It, it doesn't like fully stay, but there's definitely a tint there even right now. Under the eyes, it is really creamy. Also, I like to take a brush and just kind of blend it just a bit, kind of give it that more diffused look so it's not just like a rigid pencil line. And it does a beautiful job. I could just do a little bit of this and really work it all the way out. And I've done that before as well. Just kind of seeing how far can I pull this with just a little bit of product that I put on my skin with this brush. It does so well. So I'm really loving this. And the next thing that I'm going to be trying is this Shockwave Neon Liner. I'm going to take off the cellophane here so we can really swatch her up. Because it's not been exactly like that type of neon time yet here, even in Florida. We've still had 50 degree days. This is the neon. Oh my gosh. This is like the most gorgeous color for the spring summertime, especially summertime. Oh, I used to love this shade under the eyes, in the waterline, heck, on the lid, all over. Oh, I'm excited for this. Oh, I'm so excited for this. How does it? Yeah, she spreads. So I'll be able to buff it so it won't be so rigid. I can put this all over the lid. Ooh, doo, 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 doo. I'm excited. What is it about this color that just feeds my soul? It feeds my summer vibe. I love it. And this guy was only $4.99. So I love, you know, discovering new things that are quality from the drugstore. This I can say for certain has lasted throughout the day. Even when washing it off at the end of the day, you really got to get in there with your little like cotton pads, cotton rounds and micellar waters, things like that, some loyals to get the things off. So they last as well. I'll let you know about this one. I love an affordable deal though, especially when it's gonna give me some color and some just wow moments. Speaking of color and wow moments, while I was over there with LA Girl, I also checked out this palette. Is it on the same trend and the vibe of what I was just doing? Yes, yes it is. Now I've only tried, oh, is it one of the shades, two of the shades? so far, but I did want you to know this was in the, you know, wheelhouse of what I'm playing with right now. This is the All Nighter palette. It's only got four shades, but it is really pretty, and I actually felt like there was a lot of pigment. I used the darker blue here as far as an outer corner went. So I did an outer corner and then just kind of did a little bit more neutral everywhere, and it was really good, and it lasted all day. So you know what your girls wants to do right now? She wants to swatch all of it for you. Oh, these are super soft. I'm really shocked at how soft these are because I know like LA girl isn't always, I mean, I've heard good things and I've heard people being like, eh, about it. So you just never know. Okay. I knew this one really pulled through. I'm not mad about this. Let's see if I can build this one up a little bit more. Yeah. 
again, I know your girl has a type of color with, you know, nude lippies, the, the blue green eyes. I just, there's certain things that just feed my soul a little bit when it comes to makeup and it gets me real excited for it. This is definitely going to be something I'm playing with even more. I knew I really liked the deep tone though, just to kind of like get an eye look really deep and rich, but still give the aqua blue toned beachy vibes. So this is definitely going to be something I'm playing with more. And this was really affordable too. It's $5.99. This is a $5.99 palette. You get four big size shades, I would say. They also have other color stories. I obviously picked the one that was speaking to my beachy soul, but there's also some golds and neutrals, some rosy pink tones. So I'm excited to play with this some more. And maybe I can hunt down that neutral one and maybe wear it with this and just see how I feel about the whole thing. All right, I was a target. I like how I just start stories and just kind of like jump in and like, okay, well, let's pretend you were there. You probably were if you were following me on Instagram because I also asked you there. Have you been trying any of the ColourPop products that have gone to Target because we all heard about it, right? If you follow me on Instagram, of course you heard about it because I told you when Trend Mood told me, I told you that ColourPop is now at Target. And I've noticed at my local Targets, they had a little bit of products when the drop date was, but then more and more products were really filling the shelves kind of throughout the next following weeks, maybe months. I ended up picking up the ColourPop Deja Brew palette. I have really loved a lot of their nine palettes, their nine pan palettes. I think they're really quality, but I was curious because there are on the occasion, even ColourPop does some fails where maybe they've been trying too many palettes or too many products and they maybe formula isn't the same or meets demand, maybe it's not pressed right, all the things. But a lot of times they're more home runs for me personally than misses. But I'm wearing this today. I've been wearing this a few times now and I'm only lukewarm about it. And these are shades that you know I love. I also have the other palette that is kind of similar, but not. It's in the cardboard packaging. This is the Nude Mood. I have loved this. I have raved about this. I have so much like dips of product in here that I'm going to be close to hitting pan soon on some of these. And if you're not new to my channel, you know I love ColourPop. I've loved ColourPop for a long time. This is like the warm toned version and this is a cool toned version. And I was like, sweet, I can't wait. This sounds great. I do think it builds up well. It is very dusty. There is a lot of fallout in this, but I was like, I'm fine with fallout. That means there's pigmentation. Yes. And I do think there's a lot of pigmentation. It's on my eyes today. I, I would just say some of these more cool tone neutrals tend to, maybe my face is eating them. It just kind of fades down to nothing by midday, unless I'm doing some smokiness. That's why I kind of made sure it was dark. I didn't love crushed oats up here, this shade here, as much as I thought I would because like she looks like she'd be a really good moment and right now she looks real pretty in the swatch. But I felt like by midday that swatch, our, my lids, it was on my lids, was gone. It was like, I was like, where did it go? It like really wore down. And this shade here, Salted Caramel, I thought this is going to be great. Do you, do you really want to know what this reminded me of? This has some sparkles in it. It looks like it's like a matte, but it's got sparkles. This totally, totally took me back to the Tati Beauty palette. Her neutrals palette, the one I still have and crave all the time because it's so good. I still have her, I use her, but I was like, this is like that formula where it looks like it's a matte, but it's got sparkles in it. So it just delicately should dance on my lids. I know what this should look like because I have that palette and love it. The sparkles that are in this product move they move up to the crease and they lived up in the crease whereas the lid no longer had any and it was only like matte shadow down here and all of the shimmer moved. That was super disappointing. I was a little heartbroken about that because this would be my jam. I would start every eye look with it or something. I don't know. Beautiful. But the silver specks that are in it are just either too fluffy or move too easily and just all lived in my crease. And then there was nothing left on my lids to be that beautiful dancing glittery moment. It's like, a, it's supposed to be like a subtle shimmer to the eyes. That's not really a shimmer. It's like a little twinkling. It's just like a beautiful little frosting for your eyes when people are looking at you and you're drawing them in. It just was all up in my crease. And then they're looking at my makeup going, what's wrong with her face versus being drawn in. You know, it was not the, it wasn't the move. I was very disappointed in that, honestly. So. 
I'm still deciding how I feel about this palette, but she's definitely not a favorite. And that was a little heartbreaking for me because I love me some ColourPop. I do. Um, some of these other shades though, like Nutty For You, really great. I have Cup of You all over my lid right now and I think she is stunning. I think this color story plays so well together. Maybe I'll try this with a glitter glue. I just don't have to do that with like, like the Tati palette that you can't buy anymore. So I can't keep hyping her up. Um, but this is, this is still good. It's still quality. It's just, I was a little disappointed in that. All right, guys, I had to throw it back. Last year, I found a mascara that was not drugstore that I really liked. And I don't know what it is about mascaras, but I feel like I've been going through a mascara rut lately. And I was like, let me just go find something that I know I really, really liked and rediscover it. Does it still live up to the hype in my brain? And that mascara is the pure on point mascara with hemp. This is a $22 mascara. It's got a fluffy wand to it. I almost want to go back and rewatch the first time I used this product because it's so different from some of the other formulas that I had been using like from Essence because y'all know I love my Essence mascaras. I love the Last Princess line quite a bit. I've raved about them a lot. This mascara, it's a hemp mascara so it seems to be a little bit drier. So when you pull it out you're like oh it doesn't have a lot of product or you don't feel like that that it does the but it doesn't have like that goopy do you know the difference i feel like you're my friend we know the difference right there's a goopy and then there's a more dry this has the more dry and i was like oh no did i get a drier one but it's performing <laughs> long story long it's performing and i like to do at least two sometimes three coats and it will definitely grab the lashes now the fluffy wand does tend to make a little bit of a mess on my big old eyes because it can get like up in the crease and then what i'll have to do is wait till it dries go back in with a brush and then just kind of like blend a little bit and then that will get rid of anything that has fallen on my eye look that I've already done. And since this is a little bit newer to reintroduce to my collection, I think I've only had her now a week and a half, maybe two weeks at the most. I want to see how she does in the next couple because like I said, this is a drier formula since it's a hemp that it's making me go, is there going to be product left in a month? Is, is there going to be anything left? I don't know. I can't really remember, but I just remember loving it and like really hyping this up for a while because I was so excited about it but I don't like an expensive mascara as I add more to my lashes. What is wrong with me? I also like with this that it's not like super stiff, but watch this, watch this. This has been on for over an hour now. I've been filming for a long time. If you come back in with your curling wand, which you know your girl has to do because I have very straight lashes, even though they're kind of long, it will like just be like, boom. Just a little, a little refresher. I know some people say all mascaras do that. I have plenty of mascaras that don't do this. They either get like really crumbly all over the face or it just straight. They're just straight. They just pull back out straight and I have very straight lashes. So I always have to use a curler. So I use it before and then I use it a little bit after. I'm not mad about this and it gives them enough fluff for me. I like volume. I like fluff. I like length. I want it all when it comes to lashes because if I can avoid putting on a false lash, I'm going to do it. I'm in the process of rediscovering this mascara and I think I'm still loving it. Jury's still out because you know with mascaras, you got to let them open up, oxidize, live their life. But I've enjoyed bringing this back into my beauty space even though it's $22, not $5 like from Essence because I really prefer that. Also, I kind of, like I just said in the beginning of this video, been going through all my lip collections. So I've also been just kind of going back to some old tried and true lippy favorites like my Becca. And yes, Becca is no more. But is Smashbox bringing out more products from theirs? Are they doing any of their lipsticks? Because if so, run, don't walk to get one. I love them. Check out that video so you know what I've left in my collection because seriously, it got condensed to just the top tier stuff. This has been a really long video talking about a ton of products that I have now been trying, new things to the beauty space, things that are not working, things that are working. And I have to tell you about one really expensive product that I have now been trying. I tried it a little bit in December, but I've really been focusing on it more January and February. And it is a hair removal device. I think you guys know last summer I was trying one that I tried for like seven months and I just don't think it did anything and I feel like because of I got sick with COVID and other issues or whatever I feel like I kind of got off the like be super rigid with it but it was long enough that I was like I should have seen something so I'm trying a new one now 
this one's gonna be more pricey but I'm hoping that means it's I'm actually gonna see real results by the time I get to like the time of year where I'm gonna be wearing you know sleeveless things all the time this is the Jovis Venus Pro 2 hair remover this is a product that I have been using for a while now it's got quite a few different settings on it right now I have been trying this and really testing out the different intensities and I am right now currently up to the highest intensity with this product on my underarms because what I'm trying to see is if this product is going to be worth your money. I think, I don't know, maybe I'm just a harder hair type to have hair removal. I don't know, just maybe that last one makes me think that in my brain. I think I'm noticing a difference with this though, I think. So the way that you use one of these products, if you've never used one before, is you have to have a clean shaven area to use it. So like right now I'm focusing on the underarms to start. That's easier to one, show on camera, but also for me to be able to see a little bit more regularly and analyze as time goes on. Um, you kind of start at the lower settings. Like they have, it starts with one, two, and three, and it comes with a booklet to describe everything for you. You plug it in and then you kind of cycle through the different areas of the body that it shows you where are we targeting right now? Are you targeting your legs, your bikini area, your face, or your underarms? So I select that setting. And then you wear protective eyewear because it is always important to take care of your eyes when you're doing anything with this type of lighting and rays, things like that. This has an ice cooling head and it has six different modes with six different energy levels. I have now recently progressed up to level six, which is the highest you can go because I'm really trying to test this to see, am I going to see real results to tell you if this is worth your money? Because again, this is a pricier item and I want to give you the full details about it. I'm in the midst of trialing this right now and it's supposed to make your hair a little bit Bit softer and a little less more and more the longer you use it up until the point that you don't see any more hair growth so I'm still in the beginning phases of this journey but once you put it up and in, into your area that you're using it like I'm using it under my underarms you, you hit the button and it'll zap it you can see where the whole head up here will light up when it's ready to go because this does have safety features into it so you can't just like accidentally have it up to your eye or somebody else's eye or something it has to have skin totally like covering it and then it lets you know when it's ready to do another zap by lighting up again so you can hit the button as you move throughout the area that you're targeting for the hair removal so this is what i'm trying right now it also comes with another head it comes with another sr head because this head that i have on here right now is targeted for hair removal but this fancy little guy also comes with again instructions and an sr head with a different type of tip for the zapper portion of it. This SR head here is meant for skin rejuvenation, which is actually kind of like a nice little double bonus with this. You have skin rejuvenation and you have a hair removal device. What I really like about this compared to the other one that I use is that this head completely rotates. So I can really get into the areas and nooks and crannies that I'm trying to get to. It's very simple and easy to use so far. I'm just kind of in my beginning stages of this. So I will leave some information about it down below and a discount if you're interested in trying it for yourself. But this is something that I'm in the process of reviewing for you guys. And I will definitely keep you posted on what I find and discover because this does take time. It's like skincare. You know, skin, like hair removal takes time to really see those lasting results. So I will keep you posted on this. I'm going to jump really quick into my shout outs because you guys are my favorite part of the month every month. And unfortunately, YouTube is transitioning so much right now that it's frustrating as a content creator, especially a smaller one like myself. I am finding that YouTube is not pressing out my videos to you guys. You guys are telling me you're not getting your notifications. I wish there was something I could do on my end, but sometimes YouTube just loses us content creators and looks like this vortex. So please be sure that you are subscribed. Please be sure to hit the notification bell, go down and click all so you don't miss out on my content because my views are definitely showing me that you guys are not even being pushed my videos right now. And that's so hard and frustrating as somebody who's as small as of a content creator as I am, but I always put on a lot of hours of work into this every week. So thank you for those of you that seek me out every week. It means so much. So I want to shout you guys out. Babyface, you are back again letting me know in the massive declutter that you love some NYX butter glosses as well. I just got a recent one that I am loving. April N, you were jumping in on my shorts videos. Thank you so much. Definitely, guys, check out my shorts as well because I've been trying to upload more there so YouTube remembers that the smaller content creators exist. Dreaming Music Girl, you have been 
busting through my videos and just commenting on every single one. Thank you so much. I love that. Lisa Drennan girl, I, you have definitely been a longtime subscriber and commenter, so I love seeing you every time too. Lisa Smith, you are here every single time, multiple times. I just love seeing you guys. Thank you guys so much for just hanging in there and definitely still supporting the smaller content creators out here because you know that you've been with us from the beginning and we just love you guys so much. Thank you so much for watching. And if you do happen to be new to my channel, hi new friends. I really hope you take a quick moment to hit that subscribe button down below so you don't miss out on the upcoming videos. There will be some March Boxy Charms coming really soon and let's see what the updates say. Bye, friends. <laughs>